If you love what we do, then please consider supporting Cryptfail on Patreon. Your support helps us grow and to create more content more often. And now, on with the show. Okay, then Daisuke will wake up first and uh, go out and uh, organize some uh, meals for the group. All right. Let's see the innkeeper. And Rin will uh, wake up probably about uh, an hour later and okay. take another hour to get dressed and organized <laughs> as she takes her time to do things. Um, Chiaki probably would have woken up as soon as Daisuke, uh, sorry, Daisuke is how you've been saying it, uh, left the room, but would have waited until Rin was ready to go because she doesn't just want to kind of leave by herself. As Rin finishes up, uh, she turns to byako san and uh, clenches her two fists and brings them together in in front of her and then points to the outside as in asking you if uh, we should go together yes I think we should probably go uh, Rin looks about the room and uh, glides out the door <laughs> uh, to the main room I guess. And Chiaki will follow. And there's already a cushion out at one of the tables with food already laid out. Uh, Daisuke's not there, but the food's already there. And there's a, a, a small cushion already on the floor. And Rin goes and sits down on it, and she begins to... And being quite used to this at this point, I believe I would probably just wait for the methodical serving of food to be completed. After a little while, uh, probably midway through uh, breakfast, Daisuke walks in through the front door. He has a, a bit of snow on his head, which he uh, shakes off with his left hand. And he walks over to the table and sits down. Uh, looks at Rin, looks at how far she's gotten through her food, and she's only sort of like halfway through. You get, you, you almost see his eyes roll in his head, but <laughs> you you could you notice that it's he sort of like started and then stopped as if he thought better about it. And he sits there quietly and watches the two girls eat. <laughs> Has he already eaten, or...? Yes, he's already eaten. <laughs> okay. He will... Uh, you, you know that he will quite often do that because he has no patience. That's fair. I'm going to wake up early and eat. Well, it's not that... he's He is actually a very patient uh, person, but he doesn't see the the need in being so methodical about having to mm. serve out dinner. It's just like, well... yeah. yeah. Uh, you might as well just cook it and eat it out of the same pot, you know. Um, <laughs> so he's very, he's very, he's a very practical person, but he does not see the point in uh, this uh, mm. this almost pompous ceremony about having to <laughs> do things a certain way. Ah, and that's just the the, the crab in him, I guess. Mm. Daisuke turns to. Uh, Byakusan. Okay. Are we ready to go talk to the bookkeeper, Nishimura? 
I am. Saito-san, are you ready? Rin looks down at her perfectly empty bowl. It's it's almost you could probably reserve food in that. It's clean. <laughs> but um, she nods. Then I suppose we should go see what he has to say. Yep. Okay. She stands gracefully, you know. Um, she's wearing her red kimono again. But yeah, he's now uh, getting the things from the room, the travel, the travel pack, and and her swords. And he's going outside and and loading up Amaya, the horse. Rin turns and and uh, bows to the innkeeper and his wife. And they they bow quite low, being peasants. <laughs> Uh, and Chiaki will also bow to them. Rin holds her hand up to her, almost her chin, and then uh, lays it out so flat in front of her. I I think you know what that means. (laughs) Yeah, so she holds up her hand, um, which is out flat up to her mouth, and she uh, brings it down almost uh, straight out. Thank you. And... Uh, glancing over it, uh, Biako san uh, she acknowledges uh, in appreciation you translating or conveying that message, and she turns <laughs> and outside yep. to see uh, snow, lightly snowing outside. Near the well in the centre of the village is a stain of death. The snow is a bright reflective white, yet there is a patch of the brightest red. Without any doubt, it is blood. That cannot be good. Is anybody else outside looking at this blood? No. Bright red means it's not that old. Rin shifts, uh, looks like, from uh, the weight on the left foot uh, to the right foot as she sort of peers around at the blood and uh, she acknowledges, she nods, Ibiyako san. Looks over at Daisuke, who is has his back to the pair of you while he's putting the travel backpack on uh, on the back of Amaya, and he's belt buckling the swords across the the back of the horse um, to the back of the saddle, and he doesn't seem to have noticed. And you don't know how. But he stops as if he feels this boring into the back of his skull. <laughs> he, uh. he turns. Maybe it was something the horse had done. Noticed that Rin had come outside. He turns, sees Rin looking at him. But has he now turned and seen the blood? No, but um, Rin signs something to him. You don't. It was almost a blur. Her hands were that fast, okay. and she's uh, looking quite. She's got a, a serious look on her face, and mm. Dai Suke nods and turns and l- sees the blood. Trudges over to the the blood stain as the snow crunches under his sandals. And Chiaki's going to go take a look at the blood closer as well. And while Daisuke is uh, investigating the blood, Chiaki has been staring at it rather intently and will announce to, I suppose, anybody, it's human. Human blood, you say, Biako san Yes. As Daisuke is kneeling down and he sort of um, swipes, like wipes it with two fingers. There is certainly enough blood here for someone to have bled out. But no body. If they did not die, they certainly would be near death. But I see no, no trail. tracks. There is something. There are no spirits here, but there is something supernatural. 
In this town? I suppose something to do with this blood. I do not understand. The blood is human, yet supernatural? The blood is human. Something about the situation is supernatural. There are no tracks, but whatever did this came from the direction of the valley. And Daisuke squats there for a moment, looking up at Yaka-san, looking across over towards the the valley. This village is very small. Somebody would have noticed this by now, and the fact that there is no panic, investigation, anything, makes it seem as though this is not unexpected. Aizuke looks a little bit confused. I did think it was strange that... I've been out here preparing a mayor and looking around, but no one has stirred through the town as yet. I simply thought that most of the villagers were gone and we had woken up too early. Perhaps we should go speak with the man who said he would tell us more of the valley as... He may be able to explain. Asuke stands and his right hand, he scratches the the back of his head and he looks around, he turns around, the the snow crunching under his feet, looks back down at the blood. On the wall that borders the Shadowlands, sometimes we encounter winged beasts that drop down unexpectedly but I have never seen anything leave so much blood and not a trace as to a scuffle an encounter a battle Mm. I guess we can ask the bookkeeper who the mayor of the village is because we should probably report this I have the sense they already know but If I am wrong, then we should, yes. Something you feel? It has to do with the valley, which the villagers won't talk about. Nobody is here wondering what has happened. To me, that seems as though they already know. It is wooden. It's a little bit run down, but it's not like falling apart. A little better off than some of the other ones. Daisuke walks up to the door. He's a a little round brass bell leaning up against the the wall. Is a small rod, a wooden rod. He picks it up and Puts the small wooden rod down, back down underneath the bell. And stands there patiently at the door. And about a minute later, the door slides open and there is a man about 30. And he bows and says, please come in. My father said that you may be coming. He was correct. And he s- steps back to give you room and mm-hmm. motions to the... The room that they're in is is basically the living room. It's not a very big house. Mm-hmm. Suke looks back down the road towards the centre of town where he can see Rin standing next to Amaya. Saito-san will not be joining us. Uh, Daisuke turns back to Byaka-san. Um, no, I don't think... I do not believe she will be. I see. All right, well, I guess we are entering the house then. Yep. 
Daisuke takes off his sandals and slips into the house. The house is quiet, but the wind can still be heard from outside. The room is neat. In is it's clean. There's not really dust. There are stacks and stacks of books all over the place on all sorts of different topics, from gardening to history, floral arrangement, popular fiction of the day. It's all sorts of all sorts of stuff. Can I get you anything? Tea? Rice? Um, tea, thank you. Very good. He bows his, and he slides the door to the more private area of the, the house. And just before he slides it closed, he says, my father will be with you soon. Thank you. Daisuke's just looking around the room at the <laughs> books. Are the books well kept? Yes, well, most of them. They are, they do seem, it, it's clear if, if he looks at it, like if he's looking at it, if he's the covers, that they're, they don't have a uniformed uh, style to them. Mm. Mm. So it's not like made from one person or, or one sort of publishing house. It, they do seem to be coming from different places. The battle in the valley was 50 years ago? Uh, according to Rin, that is correct. Oh. And the son comes in with the tea and he puts it on a small basic wooden table in the center of the room and then goes and slides open the door. And Rin is standing there with a somewhat annoyed expression on her face, but that changes as soon as he's, uh, she sees the older lad. And he he bows to her. Oh, she bows back. Slight bow. And he does because he doesn't actually know. He does say, "I am assuming you're with." And he turns and looks at the other two as she's taking off her sandals. <laughs> um, Daisuke turns and he's like nodding furiously. She enters the house and she looks around she's she has a, a, almost an amazed expression on her face at the amount of books mm. and she walks over and uh, grabs one in particular and and starts reading it so the door opens the son comes in with his father the son places the ceramic cup in front of Rin and then he bows and retires and Nishimura sits down please forgive the disarray I used to have a shop, but now I just travel a couple of times a year into the different towns and sell some of the choice items to make enough money to get through each year. You seem to have quite the collection. I've been doing it many years now, yes. Part of when I go, I try to buy new ones or uh, I buy collections sometimes. Mm. It's as profitable as one might think, but... Have you been outside today? I have not yet. I see. Is that normal for this time of day, for no one to have been outside of their homes yet? In this village? Yes. I see. Oh, he looks up at uh, Nishimura. Uh, yes, I do believe that this town has fallen on hard times of recently. Is this since the main road? Uh, change direction or bypass the town? That is correct. The town was never particularly prosperous, but it was much better off for sure. It did okay. The inn did much better. There was always a couple of guests traveling. So why not simply uh, move the town closer to the main road? There was some form of petition made some years ago, but... It is quite some endeavour to move the town, as well as a certain amount of money, which the town did not have. The other option was everybody move away. But for many of us, this has been where we have always lived. And during this conversation, Rin has been turning the cup. Um, she's been steadily pouring 
equal amounts of tea from a height. And she stops, puts down the tea, uh, looks at Daisuke, and she starts citing to him. My master would like to know how you accumulated so many books. My parents had started collecting. They, my mother especially, liked to read. My father at the time was quite a good carpenter. So he was buying her books whenever he went to the city to sell his wares. And sometimes he was able to buy collections. And over time, our collection grew. And then sometimes she was finished with certain ones and we found that we could sell them back. What did you want to tell us about the valley? As you can clearly see, this town is not in as great a position as it once might have been. And that certainly started 50 years ago with the battle that was in the valley. The road was never particularly well travelled, but it certainly was more travelled than it is now. And many believed that after that battle, that that valley was haunted. So they started to take alternative routes rather than coming through here. And the village has now been a shadow of its former self ever since. But it isn't just the battlefield that is the source of our particular woes. The village itself is haunted. Why do you believe the village is haunted? The battle was between the Shizu and the Noritada. It was about some slighted love at this point, I don't think anyone truly remembers. But it did not go well for the Noritada. At the end of the battle, after they'd been routed, one of their generals, Ichi Noritada, had been wounded and was retreating. Their house, their clan, would be in complete disarray. And he got as far as our village. It was there he decided that he could go no further, but would not allow himself to be captured. And in the samurai way, had decided to end his life. He started... But a band of Ashiri Garu arrived. They did not allow him to complete. It took him about four hours to die in great pain and without dignity. Was this in the center of your village by any chance? It was. I see. Asuke looks a little bit concerned. That might explain the blood in the center of town then. It is a stain on our honor. It is always there. But it is as fresh as the day that this event, you say occurred. This event occurs on every overcast day. There is not a man, woman or child each night who cannot tell you exactly in great detail all about his suffering. We have witnessed it for 50 years. His spirit has been trapped in his final moments of torment for 50 years. Blood of the samurai appears on every overcast day. For the past 50 years? The blood is there every day. The samurai appears in the evening on any overcast day. And relives exactly how he died. I'm also guessing the Ashiri Garu as well. I am not an expert. I tried to do some reading. We did have... Uh, one of my books was from the Phoenix... You see. He does not come on clear nights, which makes me feel that maybe it was overcast on the day of the battle. There's actually not a lot of information about it. It's not a particularly important battle to the realm. It was two minor families settling a, a squabble in the valley. But the effects have lasted for 50 years. Very much so. At the time, we were in Noritada land, so... It is our shame that no one from the village came to his aid. They were too afraid. And maybe he does not blame us for it. I don't know. Has anyone ever been able to... communicate with his spirit? I don't think any of us have ever tried. I see. I think for many of us who have seen it once, have no wish to have ever seen it, in the first place, let alone again. I understand. I am the most educated of the village. The others, many of them are simple woodsmen and carvers. They lack the money to move to a larger town. Some are afraid that if they go, they will die. I could find absolutely no information on this, but they are superstitious. When faced mm -hmm. with the supernatural, it is easy to think that way. It is difficult. I have heard of people helping spirits who are trapped in this way by 
fulfilling whatever it was that has caused them to remain locked in their final moments, but it seems in order to do so in this case, you would need to change the manner of his death. Allow him to complete the ritual of seppuku. Yes, allow him to die with dignity. Daisuke asks byako san how would you get a fallen ghost to go through the proper ceremony to complete seppuku? That I cannot pretend to know. And if the town has been plagued with this issue for many years, why has no one sought to resolve this? Or why have you not moved from here? I know that this is your home, but... They do not have the money for some, and others feel that his shame is our shame, that if they leave and turn their back on that obligation, that the spirits will be angry. Fifty years ago, surely most of the people from that time would have passed. Some certainly have, absolutely. But does that diminish your family? Their descendants are here. I guess in the context of if a crime has been so severe that the sins of the father are then owed to the sons. We are all shaped by the actions of our ancestors. Basuke was uh, looked about. He was uh, looked like he was about to say something, but uh, holds his tongue. <laughs> Clearly, I am not samurai. I have read a little on the ritual. I believe he requires a second. That is correct. And if the Ashiri Guru are not cooperative, they would have to be held back. Mm. We do have some purified water, a priest travelling through some months ago. It has not been used. I believe the blade gets washed, but I'm not entirely sure. That wasn't very clear in the book. To me, the trouble seems to be... How do we obtain the spirit's cooperation in this? How does Ren appear to be taking all this? Ren is just flicking through the pages of the book that she is reading. Huh? If we were able to assist his spirit in completing the ritual so that the spirit believes it is done, that could be enough. The Ashigaru may also believe it to be completed, in which case, hopefully, there would be no reason for any of them to return. Rin closes the book and slowly puts it down onto the table next to the, the, her cup of tea, and she looks up at um, Byaka-san and begins to uh, sign quite, quite quickly. Okay. As Daisuke begins to translate. Rin says that, in a way, this samurai has suffered a great disgrace. The way of the samurai is found in death. Honor is a uh, almost a fatalistic embrace. This battle was for the love of another. And for this samurai to have not been able to complete the, the ritual of seppuku uh, would almost be considered cowardice in battle, which is the ultimate disgrace in a samurai's eyes. Rin suspects that Ashiguru might have even enjoyed this fact, leaving him to die for four hours to make him suffer the greatest disgrace. So Rin says that, and she's, um, uh, the, the sign language is almost spitting up. Um, if we were to offer the samurai the full honor he is seeking in ritual seppuku, then the Ashigaru would probably seek to interfere. I can say they very much did enjoy his torment. I have seen that firsthand. Daisuke says. Rin says that this is what she believes. The act of denying the samurai his honourable way of death is enough to keep them pleasured, excite, excited, excited, 
So their spirits live off this almost hatred that the samurai has towards them. A uh, forever, uh, an eternal mocking dance. I agree. If the ritual could be completed, I do not believe the Ashigaru would have reason to return. Uh, that is correct. But I think Rin was saying um, that the Ashigaru may interfere with the uh, ritual. That seems... Picks up the book and she <laughs> returns to the page that she was at before and <laughs> continues to read. That seems very likely. And she's sitting very upright and proper. Um, she seems to be also listening to the conversation. Uh, <laughs> so, piyako san is there a way to commune with the dead? Can you talk to the samurai? I could certainly try. It may not even be necessary. As I see it, two things must be done. Complete the ritual, which I believe he would respond to without needing to be spoken to and prevent the interference of the Ashigaru. How does one fight ghosts? That I do not know. It would be easier to talk with them than to fight them, although it does not seem as though they would be particularly inclined to speak. If the spirits believed themselves to be harmed, that could have the same effect as truly being able to harm them. That is, however, a possibility, not a guarantee. Perform the ritual, one would need a cantata, and as I do not yet own a katana, and as yourself, Biako san do not have a katana, I guess that leaves... There is a couple in the village. A couple of... Of katana? Katana. Correct. I do not believe they were samurais. Hmm. They didn't belong to samurai. Nishimura says, I can tell you there is six Ashirigaru. Six. Daisuke looks at Rin and then looks back at Byakasan. If there are six, then you will need at least someone. Well, someone will need uh, me to back them up handling or distracting the Ashigaru. And Rin puts down the book and looks up to um, Daisuke and points to herself and uh, crosses two fingers from the left to the right of her chest. And uh, Rin, it would be an honour for her to be second. I understand. Then we will try and prevent the interference. Is there anyone in the town who would be willing to fight to seek to... I can ask. So the son comes in through the front door. He must have gone out the back and you don't know how long he's been gone. And he is carrying two katana, which he puts down onto the table. One is brown, one is yellow. Both look old. Mm. Mm. These have definitely seen better days. Is there a blacksmith in town? Yes, we have one. Mm. Daisuke uh, reaches and grabs the, the two swords. With your leave, I shall go attend to these. And Rin nods, and Daisuke gets up carrying the two katanas, and... Oh, which way is the blacksmith? He's near the centre of town. You'll see the smith. Daisuke mm -hmm. nods and heads, slides the door open to the outside of the house and closes it as he shivers a little bit puts on his sandals and heads to the blacksmith. Rin looks over to you, does say f a few signs using her hands, mm -hmm. and uh, one in particular, a uh, uh, flat palm over her head. And you think she's asking you w about waiting for maybe an overcast day or something like that? Yes. As far as we're aware, we... Well, without an overcast day, there would be not be any chance to complete the ritual. And she looks at the sun beaming in through the uh, window. So not today. Unless clouds move in by evening. Rin then points to herself and mm. with her right hand, her thumb and uh, small pinky finger pointed out and the three fingers closed in and she sort of uh, pushes them down. You know this is 
to indicating to stay and she's probably asking if she can stay here and she holds the book out and then <laughs> flips the page and keeps reading. Would Saito-san be able to remain here for the moment and continue reading? My house is humble, but it is yours. Thank you. Um, holds a hand up to her mouth in a, a flat and pulls it down and bows towards Nishimura. Saito-san thanks you as well. And she picks up a her cup of tea and sips on it as she continues to read. The Legend of the Five Rings role-playing game is available from Edge Studios, starring Raven and Sane as Rin, Emily as Chiaki, and Ghost as the storyteller. Sounds and music were provided by Sirenscape and Nash Music Library. This has been a Critvale production. Thank you very much for listening.